Mm. Let's check. Hello, let's take a look at some more Super Nintendo ROM hacks floating out there. I've already covered a lot of the more popular hacks, like Parallel Worlds and Conker's Hyrule Tale, and a bunch of Mario hacks, so watch parts 1 and 2 for a rundown on those. Quick reminder though that if you want more information about how to get these games to work, I talk about it at the end of part 1. To sum up briefly, you're just joining a ROM file and an IPS file together using a utility that can be found on romhacking.net. Let's start out with a fun one right off the bat. This is Hyper Street Kart, a Mario Kart hack that's replaced every character with someone from the Street Fighter universe. They've even got Dalsum in there instead of Lakitu. That is awesome! Thematically, this is one of the best ROM hacks out there. All the racers look fantastic, and instead of red and green shells, you get Hadouken Fireballs. How cool is that? This hack does have all new tracks as well, but that's the biggest problem with this one. Some of the tracks are pretty wonky, but don't get me wrong, this is still definitely playable. I had a lot of fun with this one, it's absolutely worth checking out. I wish there was more stuff like this. I'd be remiss if I didn't take a second to talk about one of the most popular ROM hacks out there, The Link to the Past Randomizer. What this hack does in each playthrough is shuffle the location of every major item in the game. For example, you could find the Master Sword on Death Mountain, or the Ice Rod in a Chicken Coop, or what the hell, I got the Cane of Samaria right at the beginning? You can also switch the goal of the game from defeating Ganon to finishing every dungeon, as well as all sorts of other options you can tinker with. Link to the Past in particular is a perfect pick for this sort of gimmick because, while it goes without saying, that this is a beloved game, it doesn't have the greatest replay value because once you've figured out all the puzzles and you know where everything is, the experience gets kind of stale. The randomizer hack gives Link to the Past brand new life. It's a great idea and it's implemented pretty well, all things considered. Heck, even if you don't feel like playing this one, tons of people out there on Twitch, like Slackaholicus, play this pretty regularly. This hack has a ginormous community dedicated to it, so go check it out. Bear in mind this one's handled a little differently in terms of how it's hacked, so check the description for how to get started. Next there's Super Metroid Redesign. Of course I gotta talk about at least one Super Metroid hack on here since there are so many, and I can't believe I haven't mentioned this one yet. This one is ginormous in scope, the maps are huge, there's even nods to the original Metroid in certain areas. It's a pretty polished hack. Some people aren't gonna like what's done with the physics here, wall jumping is much different, and this game is really hard. Everything is bigger, stronger, and faster. It's like the Kaizo Mario world of Super Metroid. This is made for people who are really freaking good at this game and want even more of a challenge. Let's go a little off the radar for a few Sega Genesis hacks. This one is Vector the Crocodile in Sonic the Hedgehog. Vector appears as he does in Knuckles Chaotix for 32X and plays pretty much the same way. In a similar vein, there's also Sally the Acorn in Sonic the Hedgehog. She's a character from the TV series that never appeared in any of the Sonic games. Again, this is just a new character with new abilities inhabiting Sonic's world, but the sprite work here is really well done and blends in with the game almost perfectly. Okay, so we've got new characters visiting Sonic's world. How about Sonic visiting another game universe like Streets of Rage 3? Again, there's nothing all that new here from a gameplay standpoint. It's just funny as hell seeing Sonic kick some ass in this environment. So I'm just letting you know that this is out there. And hey, look, the Streets of Rage guys even return the favor and visit Sonic's universe in another hack. Now that's funny. There's tons of similar stuff like this out there for lots of different Genesis games. Back to the Super Nintendo we go with Chrono Trigger Prophet's Guile. This is a very interesting one because it picks up right after the conclusion of the first battle with Magus. Of course our heroes are thrown all the way back to 65 million BC, but here you play as Magus after he ends up in 12,000 BC when, spoiler alert, you play through the events as he becomes the Prophet of Zeal. And spoiler alert, this is a very short playthrough, but what I like about it is that it feels organic, and it fits in the original Chrono Trigger story nicely, so if you're a fan of Chrono Trigger, and who isn't, then this one is worth checking out. I've long described Super Mario RPG as a great gateway game for people that aren't into the role-playing game genre because it's easy to get into and the difficulty slants toward the easy side of things. However, if you've always wished there was more of a challenge to Mario RPG, then there's Super Mario RPG Armageddon. It rebalances the entire game and is made to be much more challenging, especially after you get past Moleville. And hey, did you enjoy the Kalex battle? There's even more Final Fantasy bosses here, so that's pretty cool. 
Going a bit off the grid here again with a ROM hack for Fire Emblem Seisen no Keifu, otherwise known as Fire Emblem 4. This one only came out in Japan, but it's one of the very best games to never make it to North America or to PAL regions. This hack, titled Fire Emblem Binary, just streamlines the experience a bit more. For example, more of the holy weapons are obtainable, there's a lot more skill granting items, and the dismount feature has been added so mounts can travel further. There's no changes to the story or anything, it's just a rebalancing of the combat system that's really well done and makes it much easier to get into the game, and it's well worth it. It's probably the best Fire Emblem game to never make it to the States. There's another hack for Final Fantasy VI titled Return of the Dark Sorcerer. This one has been a long time in the making and is a true community project, so it's cool to see it become as polished as it is today, and it's seriously one of the most impressive ROM hacks out there. This isn't a prequel or a sequel or a remake, it's an entirely new game with brand new characters, new movesets, a new script with new events, and thankfully and most importantly, not only is the encounter rate significantly lowered, but you can hold B to sprint on the world map. This is a hugely ambitious ROM hack that's taken years to develop and it's well worth checking out for yourself. Finally, there's an improvement patch for Mega Man X3 titled Zero Project. The game remains the same for the most part, but it allows you to play through the entire game as Zero. Hey, that's all anyone really ever wanted from this game, right? So that's pretty cool. Speaking of Mega Man, one last thing real quick, when I do these ROM hack videos, I get some people asking, hey, why is it always the same games? Why aren't there more hacks for Mega Man X or Super Castlevania 4 or Kirby or Star Fox? Well, the answer to that is, there aren't that many ROM hacks for those games. There are quote-unquote improvement patches out there, like for example, there's a mod for Super Castlevania 4 that removes all the candles, making the game much more difficult. And there is at least one other Mega Man X hack out there called Generations, but it's really rough around the edges and it's still being tinkered with. So I guess this is just a call to all the people out there that make these ROM hacks saying, hey, how about some hacks for some other games other than RPGs and Mario and Metroid? I can tell you there is hope on the horizon. Click on the description and you'll find a link to a Mega Man X ROM hack called Corrupted. And let me tell you, it looks freaking incredible. It's not finished yet, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it'll be featured in part four of this series. And I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.